give me back my unit. Um, fire, right? Fire! Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. Trying to kill at least one of these guys off really quick, because they do a lot of damage, and Yuna can survive one, but she cannot survive two. If two of them were to hit her in rapid succession, she would be in deep trouble. I really gotta figure out how to get him the uh, upper limit weapon weaponing break thing. I can word sometimes. Now is not one of those times. Take that! Fish smash. That is a really cool looking ball that he's got there. I wouldn't want to play actual blitz ball with that. But it is cool. It's very metal. It is the most metal of blitz balls. Riku is getting a lot of experience just by stealing mechs to death. Yar. Pretty okay with this actually, to be honest. No. Gosh, I love him. He does so much damage. And he plays such a critical role in the overall arc of the story. He's awesome. Alright. Aha! I have stairs now. Alright. And up we go! Let me see my mini-map! God, I wish I could move that notification thingy to where I, wherever I wanted it to be. I will go left, because why not? I don't actually know which direction I'm supposed to go. And so I choose one at random. Or seemingly random. I don't know, left is kind of my default. I must take a branch, I will go that way. Although, in my defense, levels are often designed- dungeons are often designed uh, with the assumption that people will go left first, and that if you go left, like, basically, in my experience, in most games, if you take the left-hand path before the right-hand path, you will find, you will be able to explore everything without, or before you get to story point. I don't know how much of that is done on purpose, or if that's just how people no think, and so Let's that's go. how level designers design. But it's an interesting observation I've made, and there... Sometimes games will buck that trend, and it's usually annoying and or frustrating when they do. That expectation is so fully formed that if it... If I'm playing a game and I, I take the left path, and that takes me straight to story, and then I can't go back and explore the right path. Uh, I guess these days, that doesn't really irritate me the way it used to, but it used to irritate the crap out of me. That is why I didn't play God of War. Not God of War. Yeah, God of War. I started playing it, and all, just like, not five minutes into the game, but trying to be five minutes into the game, I had a thing like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take her back up that way. Anyway, I had something like that happen, playing God of War, and was not... It was frustrating enough that I just kind of stopped playing the game. Actually, I think I can move farther than that, can I? I don't bet it's farther so I can move backwards. It's alright. Totally worth it to move her backwards. I'm gonna take her up. Someone else had a spear. Titus. Wink. This is gonna do nothing for him, that's alright. It turns his one into a zero. But yeah, that's why I stopped playing God of War very, very early in the game. I took a path that looked like it was not going to be the path to continuing the game, and then it was, and then I couldn't go back, and I was very upset. And I put the game down, and I never picked it back up. It wasn't my game. I think I was playing it at someone else's house anyway. So I didn't even own it to pick it back up easily, but still. Still. And that raises an interesting question. What... Uh, what responsibility, I guess? That's not really the word I'm looking for, but I can't think of anything better. What responsibility does a level designer have to... Oh man, everyone's dark. 
You know what? Let's just leave. I don't care. We'll leave. We did not beat that one. That's fine. But what responsibility does a level designer have to uh, follow conventions like that and and maybe uh, I mean, because if you if you can frust if well, I mean, level designers have the power clearly to frustrate a player out of playing the game altogether. So. Is that a, a conscious consideration that level designers have to make when they're designing their game? If I do make it so the left left branch leads towards story, does that make this game inherently a frustrating experience for the player because we can assume that uh, many players are going to expect it to be the other way around? And if not, should it be? I don't know, I think it's an interesting thing to consider. That's a lot of talking about game design that I just did. I might have to make this like a bonus episode. I think I will. Well, whatever. Attack. That's what I get for rambling while I do things. Burn! I am enjoying the game a lot more now that I have set and decided to just go with these three characters as my main party. I cannot believe I didn't just think of that on my own before my friend suggested it. But I didn't. And here we are. And here they are, with stalactites and stalagmites and stuff. I like the shiny mushroom things that only grow underwater. They're like little underwater tree shroom things. really neat. The fact that we have this path with stairs and stuff makes me wonder... Oh no, don't kill him! Oh, that was awful! I am very sad. And you all annoy me. Ah. Oh. Of course, I have to have him antidote himself. One thing that's interesting about this area in particular... You know what, I think I'm just gonna turn this into a full episode, because... <laughs> just won't have an intro. One thing that's interesting about this area in particular is that we have... It's, it's definitely trials. For, for summoners making their pilgrimage. And there is definitely a path. We're seeing stairs. Here in the background of this of this battlefield in particular, you can see stairs. We have to go up and down stairs in these otherwise natural saving paths to get anywhere. We go through these lakes that don't really make sense in an attempt to get to the things that make stairs pop out of the ground and stuff like that. And like so this is this is mostly a natural seeming cavern, but at the same time we're also seeing man, I wish I had more antidotes. Oh, well, it sucks to be me. It looks mostly like a natural seeming cavern, but there are definite paths that have been created or modified for use by people for the purpose of being a trial on the way to Xanarkin. And yet, we don't have, uh, I mean, we, and, and, and yet, things like the lighting along the path are these natural seeming mushrooms. So it really raises a question about just how curated, is not the word I'm looking for, what it, what all went into the into the methodology of creating this this place, this labyrinth of of trialness that is not, by the way, at all like the cloisters of trials that we find at each of the temples. In a way, Gagazet is very like in some ways I should say, Gagazet is very like the temples. There is a faith uh, pretty far along into it that will rarely be seen by anyone but summoners. There are trials 
along the path, not just, like, there's the Ronso, which you have to get their approval to go forward, essentially, but then we have these underwater, or underground caverns with water lakes to swim through, and things that you apparently need to hit with a blitz ball, because everyone's going to have a guardian that throws things with a blitz ball, right? Whatever. And other things going on. So in a sense, I mean, it's still, it still fits the pilgrimage as it has been set up to this date. Or to date. So far. But at the same time, it is also very different. Like, even the nature of the trials is very different. So weird. <laughs> they just put their faces in the panels. No. Okay, so I guess we'll go this way. This is a this is a spectacularly weird puzzle. What is this? They just like swim up and put their head in the thing and it works or it doesn't, but you don't really know if it works or it like, how do we know that it works or it doesn't because the interface was like, nope, try again. How do they know if it works or it doesn't? Is it just me or is that really weird? I feel like that's weird. We are going to... We are going to see if I have anything that will hit everything. Sure, that'll hit everything. Let's see if this is useful. I've had these... I've had all of... Cool, that was useful. I've had all of her items. Oh, I should be killing little fish sooner be first before the big fish because they're poisonous. Grr. I've had her items sitting in my inventory for a while and just not being used, which is kind of silly. Such is life. Alright. Two can play at the poison game, and two will play at the poison game. Man, I get a lot of turns in before the while these guys are just sitting around. Having been wrong about there not being any forced underwater stages after when I said I didn't think there were going to be any more, I would like to point out that after Mount Gagazet, I don't think there are any more forced underwater areas. Let us see if I eat my words again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kill all the things. She'll live. The thing that really irritates me is that I get to go through this entire dungeon, and this this is a traditional... Hey! This is the second real traditionally traditional kind of... Ah... Uh, yeah, in a sense of, of dungeons be a caving thing, cavey thing. But I don't even have the option of using my healers to heal myself outside of battle here. We have this awful poisoning thing going on, and I'm stuck using potions. Because I just... Because they're not usable in battle, they, they, they did this weird thing where they t tied battle to the people in your party. We've seen one place earlier in the game where this kind of cropped up, which was when they... When, when Riku first... Sorry, when Riku joined the party permanently. This was the second time we had her in the party, but the first time it happened, we couldn't actually... Like, the first time she joined the party, Titus got ripped away from her and ended up on the stage. The second time Rika joined the party, it was... Everyone else was already assembled, we had six of the seven characters in our party, and we had just crossed the Moonflow. And if you talk to everyone at the Moonflow station, nothing happens. So you leave town... And even though it's supposed to be Titus leaving town by himself, you've got all six characters in your party, because in that little stretch of woods between... Uh, I can use Orin. I'm on land now. 
in that little stretch, that's what it is, in that little stretch of woods between the, the shoe puff thing and the place where she joins your party, there's just... It, I, I don't know why they actually made that a battle area. That area is just big enough for you to go over to where she's at and then... You grab her and then you move on. But it creates just that little bit of narrative gameplay discord where he's supposed to be by himself and yet you've got access to your entire party for battles. And yet here, when you have your whole party and just not everyone can fight, you don't even have... Because the fight system and and the party inventory is all linked together the way it is, you can't... When you're in the water, since you can't use them in battle, you also can't use their abilities to heal yourself. And that's just annoying. That doesn't even make sense. There's no reason Yuna can't be, like, clinging onto Titus's back in the water and just be like, no, it's cool, I will totally heal you, bro. Ugh. One part. Bam. Anyway, forward I go. Up these stairs. And one thing I do like about this dungeon, hitting the switches and doing the things actually changes the shape of it. It brought up just, like, before you just had this, this rock, the stairs rock that came up out of the ground to fill the hole that was there. In this case, you had this big open space and these rocks, we don't know if they came from up underneath or if they came down from above, but you can see a sort of mechanism by which, uh, oh, walk, well, can just take that out. You can see a sort of mechanism, uh, you can't see the mechanism itself, but you can assume that they came in from above or, or came up from below when as a result of you pushing that switch. Which, by the way, could have been done with magic, but judging by the switches and how they looked, it's probably safer to assume that it's actually a Machina mechanism. One more example of Yevon doing Machina things. Upon us soon. She has sent fiends to test our summoner's strength. Who is she? Unaleska. Lady Unaleska. In Xanarkin, she awaits the arrival of the strongest. She is still alive? As much as Micah and Seymour. I see. Lost your nerve? No. Nothing frightens me now. <laughs> Braska would be proud. Then I must not let him down. And on that semi-private moment, I'm going to end this episode that I didn't initially intend to be an episode. Thank you for watching. Have a good one. <laughs>